Hey, everybody, before we get into today's show, just want to make sure you knew that you can get your free bottle of either the Universal Binder or the Daily Detox Support completely free on all qualifying orders going on right now over at Equal Life while supplies last. So if you've been looking for a good binder to use with your favorite flex mail or cheat mail or alcohol or before a sauna or maybe add it on to one of your favorite protocols like the Equal Life Detox, Functional Medicine Detox, get your bottle completely free. Or maybe you're already doing a heavy metal detox or a mold-based protocol and you'd rather pick up the Daily Detox detox support to help ramp up phase two detoxification, get those environmental toxins, the heavy metals, et cetera, out of the body that much easier. Well, either way, your pick on us, head on over to stephencabral.com slash shop for all the details and get your free bottle while supplies last. Now enjoy the show. Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board certified doctor of naturopathy, Dr. Stephen Cabral shares with you exactly how you can reverse aging, take back your health, and live a life full of energy and passion with new 20 minute episodes every single day to keep you healthy and engaged. Now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. All right, everybody, back with a brand new Cabral house call. Yes, we are still in the hotel room traveling for a brand new interview based series. More details on that coming soon, but excited to get into today's Cabral house call where we're going to be going through five to six of our community's questions, just like we did yesterday. If you'd like to follow along with today's questions, feel free. Head on over to stephencabral.com slash 2928. That is where all the questions will be. All right, let's get right into it. Uh, I just opened the document. So many great questions, of course, have come in. We're going to get to as many as possible right now. First one is from Lisa, All Things Wellness, Weight Gain, Weight Loss, Body Transformation, Anti-Aging. Let's see what Lisa has to say. Hello again, Dr. Rawl. In addition to having mega stomach in colon along with L-I-M-O, which just by the way, from anybody don't know, doesn't know what that means, or you didn't yesterday, didn't listen to yesterday's uh, show with Lisa, that is lower intestinal microbial overgrowth. It says that um, she also has an IPMN branch cyst on my pancreas, uh, which has not changed in the last six months, so it will be monitored, monitored annually. I am not sure if this is attributed to my condition, but I do take digestive enzymes along with HCL with each meal. I am not sure if I'm taking enough, but I, but what I can afford. My GI doctors have been stumped by my condition, but did offer antibiotics for my uh, overgrowth, which I am considering because my insurance will cover it and I'm out of money. What would you do if you had these conditions? Okay. So I answered yesterday's questions on the CBO protocol and the different issues. So basically I, I was you know, very specifically said to run that bacteria and parasite stool test, really important. Even if you, you need to save for that, that's what I would do. It comes with a full plan. So I, I need, I need data. That is how I operate. Meaning that I want to give people, I want to give people the answers that they wish that they had and they wish they had years ago. Um, and so they don't have to guess anymore. And so that, that's what I hope to bring to the world is, is at home lab testing that's kept private, not shared with your doctors, not unless you wanted to, uh, not shared with health insurance, not shared with anybody. It's just yours. It's your information. Equal life has it. The lab has it. That's it. It's private. And so but let's talk about the um, IPMN. So this is a non-cancerous, essentially cyst or tumor that can grow in the pancreas that can, and not always, but can lead to cancer. It's somewhere around 11% or so. Um, so again, like the odds aren't necessarily super high, but we obviously want to do what you did, which is most likely run an MRI uh, on that abdomen. So that's what I would do. You know, you're going to monitor that, as you just said, six months or every 12 months, whatever your doctors recommend. There are certain protocols that you can do, but not necessarily because it's not necessarily cancer. So what are we looking to do? We are always in these particular instances... And it's better that it's branch duct. Again, I have to give you my disclaimer now. I can't provide any medical advice, medical diagnosis, medical cures, or medical treatments. But I have studied 
cancer quite a bit. I'm still waiting because I like to do things the right way and properly. And I want to give people a lot of resources. And so I want to be helpful. I've studied pancreatic cancer and, and IPMMs uh, quite a bit. And so better that it's branch duct. And I don't know, you didn't say if it was in the tail, the head or the body. Um, but again, I don't want to say like, oh, these are ideal, but better that it's branch duct and, um, and that it hasn't grown. That's what we're looking for, right? Trying to keep it under two centimeters and making sure that it doesn't grow. Okay. So that's that the digestive enzymes, great. Keeping the blood sugar overall balanced. But again, it's not that you can't eat carbohydrates, uh, not overdoing fat intake, which by the way, taxes the pancreas as well. Um, not overeating, being careful with alcohol, being careful with high levels of the saturated fats, um, maybe even using things like pancreatic enzymes, which is in addition to the digestive is the um, trypsin and chymsin, or chymsin, however you like to pronounce it, um, can often be helpful. But overall, um, balancing the entire body. Like that's really what it's about, doing your functional medicine detoxes, balancing where there's inflammation, removing heavy metals, doing all of those things that you need to do. All right. Uh, Anonymous is up next. Hello, I'm currently taking the pill form of birth control. I plan to come off of the birth control in about six months. I plan to test my hormones at that point to start rebalancing. I also would like to do the CBO protocol due to the excessive gas and bloating I've experienced for several years now. I'm wondering if it would be a good idea to do the CBO protocol while still on birth control, or should I wait until I come off of it? I know the birth control can have negative effects on my gut, so I want to. I don't want to slow my gut healing by doing it while still on birth control. Thank you. Okay, so let's see. You plan to come off in six months. Got it. Well, what, what I would do is this. You wrote in two months ago and about that, let's say, yeah, about two months ago. So what I'd like to say is this. Again, I can't give any medical advice, advice but I, I do agree with you that birth control can affect your digestive system. There's no doubt about that. However, if your digestive issues started before birth control, then it's most likely not the birth control specifically. What I may recommend to you is that two months before you're getting off birth control, you begin the three-month CBO protocol, and then you finish with that CBO uh, finisher. That's essentially what I'd recommend. And then you can have the best of all worlds, because by that third month, you're already off of birth control. You're putting in the finishing touches with month three, and then you're doing the heal and seal with the CBO finisher. So yeah, that's what I would do. You're already you're only waiting another, essentially, uh, four to six weeks to start. Okay. Lindsay's up next. Hello. I love today's episode on rice. I eat a lot of banza. It's a chickpea rice. What are your thoughts on this? All right. You put in the link and I almost never can click on the link because the truth is I want to be able to get through as many questions as possible, but you put it in and I can't help but actually want to figure out what chickpea rice is. All right, so clicking on the link right now, it's taking me to the Bonza page, and let's see what Bonza is all about. All right, it is rice made from chickpeas. Okay, what are the ingredients? Chickpeas, potato starch, xanthan gum, olive oil, garlic extract, thyme extract, sea salt, garlic, yeast extract, parsley, onion. Okay. So I'm looking on the packaging, scrolling through the images. I am. All right. There's the non-GMO. Excellent. Whenever you see potato starch, you need to be a little bit uh, leery of seeing potato starch. It can be a name for multiple other things. Um, so I don't want to get too deep into that right now, but it says non-GMO, so we know it's not genetically modified. That's a good thing. The only issue with this is that none of it's organic, so I don't know about the pesticide levels. Um, it is gluten-free, so that's good. And... Yeah, I mean, I would really love because I don't even know like the quality of the olive oil. The there's only well, let me give you the, let me give you the, the nutritional supplement facts. All right, so for 1.8 ounces, I'm assuming you're eating a whole lot more than 1.8 ounces. Um, but there's four servings. It's 170 calories per serving. Three grams of fat. Uh, 29 grams of carbs, five grams of fiber, which is excellent, and 11 grams of protein. So pretty excellent. So let's say you're eating two servings. You're at about six grams fat, 
uh, you are at about 60 grams carbs, 10 grams fiber. That's pretty great. And 22 grams of protein. So I like, I like that for the most part. I just, I would just wish, and I know it costs a lot more. So I understand why companies do this. I, I totally get it, but I don't love seeing the xanthan gum there. I don't love seeing the potato starch, but they have to give it some type of thickening effect to get that, the herbs and stuff to stick. So I understand why they're doing it. Um, yeah, but it's it's not my favorite. It's not my favorite. That's all I have to say. It looks delicious, but not my favorite. All right, in terms of ingredients, that's all. So it's like all good ingredients if you can kind of make it yourself, but I don't love the extra things that are added to it. And so unfortunately, I can't give it my, um, this is amazing seal of approval. But it's not, it's not terrible. It's just, it's not organic olive oil. You don't know where that olive oil is sourced. Probably high levels of omega-6 is in there. There's some different gums in there and starches. But every once in a while, yeah, probably, probably not a problem. Probably not a problem. All right. Next question is from Lewis. And again, I always have to give you my unbiased perspective. It does. It's just, it's my perspective on these things. You might have a different one and that's okay. Like that's totally fine as well. You may love it and it might be a better choice for you. And I totally get that. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. All right. Lewis is up. Hi, Dr. Brawl. Do you have any thoughts on monoatomic gold? How about colloidal silver as a daily mouthwash? Thanks. Okay. So I've studied a lot about ionic gold and gold in general with Ayurveda, Ayurvedic medicine and ancient Ayurveda. It's very infrequently used now. When I was over in India, they had a couple of treatments using gold. There are certain specific times that you may use it for everyday use. I do not recommend it. Uh, it is a neurotoxic when taken at a larger amount. And I'm a little bit, as I said, weary or leery of products containing gold right now as well. Ingestible, right? If you're using this as a mouthwash, maybe, but, but probably not. And that's because you recommended another product, which I think would serve you better and that is colloidal silver. So colloidal silver, I would have no issue with as a daily mouthwash. It's antimicrobial. Uh, it is antipathogenic and uh, antibacterial. I think it could be a good use. I, I much prefer a sesame oil, oil pull, or even a coconut oil, oil pull. But I have no problem with the colloidal silver. I really don't at all. And so, uh, yeah, if you enjoy that, Keep on keeping on. Just look for like a nanoparticle, like a sovereign silver or a brand like that. You'll see my favorite brand at stephencabral.com slash resources. All right. Jessica's up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. I've learned so much from you. Thank you for all you do to empower so many people. Thank you, Jessica. I appreciate that. My question is on melatonin. I know you've done many episodes on melatonin that are generally a proponent of its usage in moderate amounts. I typically take two to three milligrams per night, but there are a lot of people in the health space who do not think taking melatonin is a good idea. I hear them usually say something about it being a hormone and not wanting to introduce external hormones to the body if you can help it. But I've always found their rationale to be vague. I know you've done so much research on melatonin. Could you articulate the Steelman argument for why taking one to five milligrams of melatonin every night may not be a good idea? Okay, so you're asking me to steal man an argument for why taking melatonin every night may not be a good idea. And I can't steal man that because I think for many people, especially over the age of 40 to 50, would get great benefit from taking melatonin, like a non-groggy variation uh, at a low dose, because it is a powerful antioxidant. It is a powerful antiviral. It's a powerful immune booster, and it is a powerful potential anti-cancer cell scavenger, which because it helps boost the immune system. It is also amazing for people to get in deeper levels of deep sleep which happens predominantly in the first half of the night. It can be very helpful with then getting into REM, which can be helpful for dementia and Alzheimer's later in life. It helps to reduce oxidative stress and free radicals. Uh, really powerful. And so uh, it's definitely a top nutritional supplement. Top 10? No. But is it a top one? Sure. But you know what I would say is it's if you need it. Meaning like if you track your sleep scores and you're getting less than an hour of deep sleep, and you're getting less than two hours really of REM sleep, like that's the minimum, and at least an hour and a half of REM, then you may need it. If you 
take a bedtime cortisol test or a stress mood and metabolism test and you see evening cortisol elevated, yeah, you can work on meditation, you can work on all sorts of things, but why not use a little melatonin to help reduce the evening cortisol along with something like the um, adrenal soothe and magnesium? So there... It is a hormone, but it's not a, a sex hormone, meaning like so is vitamin D. All right, well, vitamin D acts like a hormone in the body. It's a vitamin, yes, but it acts like a hormone synthesized very specifically by the liver and other parts of your body like a hormone. It helps with hormone synthesis in other parts of the body as well. If you are low on um, serotonin and you, you know move more towards depression or even autoimmune, well, melatonin has been shown to be really helpful. So... You know, there's a lot of people out there who make blanket statements, but they don't look at bioindividuality. I would never use melatonin with someone who has great sleep because why? why? Why would I do that? I don't need that, right? But would I use it with someone with acid reflux? Yeah, it's been shown to work, right? Like scientifically, I can show you that it works with that. Autoimmune issues? Yes, I would use it with that too. So again, I can't provide medical advice, but um, here's, here's, um, a couple podcasts that would help you with this episode two, five, eight, seven, and episode two, six, nine, four. And it contains the research as well. So just go to stephencabral.com slash two, five, eight, seven, and then slash two, six, nine, four. And that should, um, be that. But again, my job is not to convince the world of anything. It is to put the education from an unbiased perspective into the world for those people at that moment in time that connect with it, I hope that it can begin to help them change their life for the better. But if they're not ready to receive the information or they believe something to be different, that's okay too. But what you'll never hear me do is kind of like go back and forth with people because most people have their minds made up and that's okay. That's all right. I'm here to help people that, that want to keep an open mind. All right. Let's we oh, let's see. Did we do our five questions minimum? We got Lisa, Anonymous, Lindsay, Lewis, and Jessica. One, two, three, four, five. All right. So that is it for today's show. I mean, the time flies. Honestly, like I love answering your questions. I want to. I've made a commitment to our community. Keep the podcast around fifteen minutes uh, each and every day, so that hopefully you can tune in on a daily basis, learn just a little bit more. Because it's never about one thought, one idea, one article, one book, or one podcast. It's the accumulation of this knowledge and the network effect by connecting it all of the ideas over time. So hopefully this was helpful. I appreciate you. If you haven't subscribed to the show, we would love you to do so. Of course, review the show as well on your favorite podcast player. And I'll be back tomorrow with a brand new Mindset and Motivation Monday back in the home office. Take care, everybody. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning into today's show. Before you head off, just make sure you do not miss your choice to pick up either the Universal Binder or the Daily Detox Support completely free. This is a $49 plus value, yours completely free on all qualifying orders going on right now over at Ecolife. So you get to choose. Usually we're going to give you one of our favorite items, but we know some people may already have the Universal Binder. Some people are already on the Heavy Metal Detox, the Mold Protocol, or whatever it may be, and they may want to try our new Daily Detox Support, which enables your body to ramp up Phase 1 and Phase 2 detoxification specifically phase two, to help you with heavy metals, environmental toxins, etc. So this is yours completely free on us to try it out. These are a full 30-day supply. Head on over to stephencabral.com slash shop for all the details and get your free bottle this week while supplies last.